it's premier and ah oh, fuck it i give up uh, if it's too loud tell me chat i will reduce volume okay he comes and goes without leaving a trace only appearing at the most critical moments he's highly knowledgeable and he likes to share his observations with others she has a cold and stern exterior and her spotless battle record has earned her renown throughout fontaine she is an unusual looking melusine with an equally unique perspective on the world and now their voice actors have all gathered here today to we're gonna get deans we are hosting the program, program. Hey, uh, woo -woo. Hey. Can't believe we're i love it here. <laughs> Hello, travelers. My name is Zach Aguilar, and I voice the male traveler. Today, our hosts for the special program include... Hello, everybody. I'm Yuri Lowenthal, the voice of Dainsleaf. You may know me from all of those new character intro videos and occasionally drop in lore on y'all. And I'm Sarah Williams, the voice of the head nurse at the Fortress of Maripede, Sejuin. She's there keeping everybody all healthy and nice and making sure everybody feels good. And hey everyone, I'm Crystal Lee, the voice of Fontaine's champion duelist, Clorand. Pew, 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 let's get it. All right, nice. So we've got a traveler, a man of mystery, a duelist, and a healer. I think it's the perfect adventuring party. Huh, uh, what a wild coincidence, you guys. I just received an <laughs> invitational letter to a new domain. Yeah, that's yeah, not a coincidence. That. <laughs> Gee, well, to a new end. domain? That's just destiny. Yeah. Definitely. You know, this new domain seems to be right behind us, but in order to complete the challenge, we'll need to tackle several missions first. Well, then what are we waiting for? Let's do this! Traveler, Paimon, would you join us and play Mar Chose Hunter Judgment Day? This script was adapted from the real history of the Maro Shosei Hunters. You all will play the role of hunters from a bygone era and resolve a series of events unfolding in the capital. Many of my habits are customs I've adopted from the Maro Shosei oh, Hunter yeah. tradition. They fought against monsters, while I fight against lawbreakers. For when I draw my blade, I am but an instrument of Fontaine's law. She looks too good. Loaded. Time to testify. Oh my. Madam Mage says that every page of a storybook is a segment of the present. It's so vast and mysterious. There must be quite a story behind this place. So. All right. Even Sethos is. That's never Her element is electro, Nano. Way ahead of you. Be Even Sethos is a little ability, of course. It's just so much more dangerous in there than I ever imagined. Oh, well, if it hurts, just let me know. Let's blow bubbles! <laughs> Don't be nervous! Just relax! A strange disease. One I suspect that every Fontanian suffers from. But they don't trust me at all. Do you really think it matters whether I'm Melazine or a human? I don't believe Master would suddenly disappear for no reason. There must have been something she just had to do. In the new world, they bade farewell to the Shrouded Sun. At last, they no longer needed to dwell on their suffering. Or try oh to God. differentiate between various thoughts of blasphemy, such was the price they paid, and thus their souls became cleansed and pure. The way he's holding his sword, he must be a real Mara Chose hunter. You used it yourself, didn't you? That's why you have a human appearance. What quest That's is quite what? a gamble. But I believe that I am the one walking into a trap. <gasps> One day, oh I shall God. have my vengeance. Oh. That way, Captain Dainsleth could accomplish his own goal. The loom of fate has already been completed. Captain Dainsleth? <laughs> Traveler, let me ask you this. 
Do you believe your sibling to have betrayed you? What? What? What is happening? <laughs> Literally, like, I couldn't tell which quest was which one. Like, it's so confusing, right? I, me too. Because, like, we have the Chloren Fontaine cast, and then we have, we have Dane. Like, oh my, fuck, this is going to be insane. I'm dying. I don't know. I don't know how to feel anymore. We'll watch this at the end again, like on YouTube probably. Fate is completed. Lumine, I mean the Abyss sibling, is going to meet Dane as well. Okay. I don't know. That was insane. And then they called they called him Captain Dane Slip. Who called him Captain Dane Slip? I don't know. It's Sunday all over again. Yeah, this music is very nice. Is Dane a part of Mara Shose Hunter? I feel like that's they are deliberately trying to make it seem that way. I think those are separate quests. I don't think these are connected at all. I don't know, Louis just showed up with her sword, man. I don't think she's gonna like stand and look at him. Oh, it looks like our first mission is here. <laughs> Fancy that. Assemble your team. Oh, I get it. Our first mission is to introduce the new characters. All right, this is getting exciting. Here it is. All right then. Well, how about we start off by introducing Fontaine's strongest champion duelist, Clorand. You would say that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's true. In my role as champion duelist, my opinions do not matter. For when I draw my blade, I am but an instrument of Fontaine's law. That sword is so pretty. I can't get over it. Oof. Where evil looks, shoot on sight. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> Those animations. Did you see that so ultimate? So good. That ultimate is so cool. Mm hmm. Clarence's strength actually has a really interesting origin. She inherited it from the Mara Shose hunters. Ooh, the hunters from the artifact set. Mm hmm. The Mara Shose Hunters were an organization that defeated monsters and upheld justice from the shadows. I think the group's name has also been mentioned in some of Fontaine's historical records. Exactly. The Mara Shose Hunters have a long history. To modern day Fontanians, they're nothing more than an old legend from novels and plays. But for Clarand, the Mara Shose Hunters legacy is really real. If travelers want to learn more about the Mara Shose Hunters, then be sure to check out Clarand's story quest in the new version. See, I want to learn more about the Mara Shose Hunters. I think the whole Mara Shose stuff is in her story quest. Abilities. Clarand is categorized as an electro sword user, but she actually uses both a sword and a pistolet to attack her enemies during combat. Now, her normal attack deals physical damage by performing up to five consecutive strikes. During her charged attack, Clarand uses her pistolet to target enemies in a V shape in front of her. Mm. Also, Clarand has developed a special ritual over the years. She always polishes her weapon before each duel. That is so dignified of her. I know, right? And kind of adorable. Even the champion <sighs> duelist of Fontaine has a cute side, huh? Aw. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah is starting to sound just like Sijuin. Oh, what? Though it's probably a meaningful ritual for Clarand, right? That's exactly right. It's a habit that helps Clarand focus on the opponent in front of her. Ooh, her in fact, Clarand's elemental skill, Hunter's Vigil, is an ability that demonstrates how potent she can be when she's focused. Ooh. Check this Bond out. of life? During combat, unleashing Clarand's elemental skill will cause her to enter the Night Vigil state. During this state, Clarand can unleash two different types of special attacks. 
Her normal attacks will be converted into swift hunt pistolet attacks. Okay, my primo and gems are quaking. I don't know if I want to skip her anymore. Huh. It looks like Clarion gains a bond of life during her elemental skill. Does the skill have any additional effects? Oh, good perception on those eyes. Yeah, those this is kind of like Electra. Increase Cloran's bond of life. And her lunging attack, Impale the Knight, will clear the bond of life. Wait, so she accumulates the bond with one hand and then clears it with the other? I don't want to oh, skip hey, that's it really anymore. Good <laughs> yeah, Cloran's special attacks have different effects depending I will on the try value to get her. of her bond of life. So when her bond of life is like relatively low, her swift hunt pistol attacks have a piercing effect and they deal greater damage. But when her bond of life is relatively high, her lunging attack impales the knight. Because it's like very quick strikes. AOE and deals higher damage. You know, I ah, was like, gotcha, I get it. So the sword strikes that he does. That's what Ari meant, I guess. And then use her sword to clear it once it reaches a certain amount. And that way, both attacks hmm. benefit each other. Bingo! Though you should remember the effect of one Ooh. of Koran's unique talents. So when she's in the night vigil state, any healing other than the one provided by her lunging attack, impale the night will be converted into a bond of life this unique talent allows different healing effects to alter the pacing of Cloran's gameplay so travelers can experiment with a variety of different tactical combinations that's cool also although Cloran is most renowned as a champion duelist she has never forgotten her identity as a Mara Jose hunter so during her elemental burst last lightfall Cloran draws on her Mara Jose hunter <laughs> heritage her to unleash so an ancient skill that empowers mortals to fight deadly monsters this ability allows her to swiftly evade enemy attacks and strike her opponents. Her burst deals AoE electro damage and grants her a bond of life based on her max HP. Wow, that's so cool. But if that power is designed to fight monsters, is it really okay for her to use it in a regular duel? <laughs> Good point. I think Cloran just has to adjust the uh, amount of force that she puts behind those blows. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Also, Cloran can draw on the strength of her companions after unlocking her passive talent, Dark Shattering Flame. Man, that sounds cool. So, when a nearby party member triggers an electro-related reaction, the electro damage dealt by her normal attack and her elemental burst will increase based on her attack value. Though, note, there is a ceiling to the damage bonus that she can gain from this effect. Clorand also has another passive talent called Lawful Remuneration. If her bond of life is greater than or equal to a certain percentage, then a change in her bond of life value will increase her crit rate. That's right. And while she's in the night vigil state, the percentage of healing converted into a bond of life will increase. Wow. Yeah. And finally, being a champion duelist gives Clorand a strong familiarity with all the regions of Fontaine. So, when she's in your party, Cloran can reveal the locations of Fontaine regional resources on the mini map. So awesome. <laughs> I'm sure that Travis I think Linny has to this one other treasure, than her. defeat monsters and of course uphold justice. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> so, so 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 so. Clorand is usually pretty stern and composed as a champion duelist, but I wonder how she unwinds. Like, does she have any hobbies? Ooh. I'm sure that she has some interests outside of work. I mean, she's always accepting cosmetics products from Sijuin and making sure to return the favor because she's sweet. Aww, and yeah, of course she does. Clorand is an active member of the tabletop troupe during her off hours. So in version 4.7, travelers won't just have the chance to learn more about the Mara Chose hunters during her story quest, the Raparia chapter, they'll also get to join Clorand on a very special tabletop troupe adventure. Woo! I love TTRPGs so much. Ooh, I know, Nano. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Are you with hearing all this? Of that, that is all the information that I have to share about Cloran. So, next up, let's introduce our adorable little yeah, she's a freaking oh, yeah, yeah. player. Oh, too excited. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> we gotta look at her demo first. Yes. You only get one body, so you gotta take care of it. But it's just as important to take care of your mind. Sijuin's cute. Hold still. <laughs> She might feel a little prick. What a cutie. <laughs> He's so, so cute, it's unreal. Wow. I love her pills so Cuteness much. Overload. The bubble has ears on it. I would love to ride around on a bubble like that. She's yeah. with her little legs dangling in the air. Oh. Yeah, with the bubble gun and the giant syringe. Guys, so 
cute. <laughs> Those bubbles are so big. Her kit looks really, really fun. I know, but but yeah, but but if that's the syringe she uses on her patients, I can see why they might be nervous about getting sick. <laughs> oh, for sure. Hey, sometimes you gotta take your medicine. And since she's the head nurse at the Fortress of Maripede, Siege Wing wants everyone to stay healthy. She believes that taking care of your body is the most important goal. But she often encounters people who overwork themselves in the production zone, so she always tries to sneak them healthy meals. But she doesn't think that's a substitute for some proper rest. Oh, we'll take a page out of her book. Yeah, seems like you'll need to be well fed and well rested if you want to keep up with Sijuin. <laughs> for sure, she seems like such a caring and attentive person. But then, what's she like when she fights? Well, Sijuin is a hydro bow user. Her normal attack unleashes up to three consecutive attacks. During the second and third attack, Sijuin takes out a pill and tosses it at her opponent. I saw that in the demo. It's like she's literally telling her opponents to take their medicine. Look at the size of that thing. She can make aimed shots using her charged attack. Once the shot is held and fully charged, Sijuin's bow will fire slow moving ministration bubbles. She's a bow user? Just make sure not to release her arrow. Oh, and also, Sijuin uses a I absolutely not guess that. to fire a giant bolstering bubble bomb during her elemental skill, Rebound Hydrotherapy. The projectile bounces between nearby opponents, dealing hydro damage to anyone it touches, and restoring HP to all nearby party members, well, except for <laughs> Sijuin herself. Sijuin will be healed her a certain so amount of cute. health when the bolstering bubble bomb disappears, which is based on her max HP. <laughs> Bolstering bubble bomb. Say that three times fast. Oh, yeah, those do look like nervy orbs. Travelers could have a, a bubble blowing contest with their sijuins. Would that be That's great? So interesting. You, you can have that Boy, idea for free. It's exactly it's like blowing idea. bubbles. <laughs> The longer you hold her elemental skill, the larger the bubble grows. Once the projectile is released, it will gradually decrease in size as it bounces around. The bigger the bubble, the greater the damage. She's the magical girl effect. of Genshin. And Andy. if a large bubble hits a weaker enemy, they'll be trapped inside. Whoa. Guys, it's like she's trapping them in a cage of kindness. Like but the that, hydro you, you know, you can tell she, she cares about them. Her bedside manner is so strong. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, wait a second, are those the orbs that Nivellette <laughs> drops? It looks like Sijuin oh. creates two yeah. source water droplets when she fires a bubble. And it looks like she gains a bond of life when she touches them? How does that work? Uh, I can't explain that as well. Since she has training as a nurse, Sijuin understands how to make the most of a dire situation. Her elemental skill creates source water droplets. Ah. And Sijuin can give herself a bond of life by absorbing them. When that bond of life is cleared, Sijuin can regain some elemental energy based on the value of the bond of life. Neat. Ah, so Sijuin's mm. healing can nullify her bond of life and she can restore energy for herself. Nice. That's right. While the bond of life is hazardous to most people, it can actually be perceived as a real advantage for Sijuin. Yeah. After she unlocks her talent, detailed diagnosis, thorough treatment, Sijuin's healing will be increased based on the total bond of life values across all the characters in her party. Oh, thank so Arlequin and Florent like can make the bond of life a lot less scary. <laughs> <laughs> After using her elemental burst and absorbing nearby source water droplets, Sijuin will use the syringe to spray enemies in front of her. <laughs> this attack deals <laughs> continuous hyper damage. <laughs> Wait, that's so cute. Even her attacks are a form of medical treatment. A huge syringe. Yeah, the I syringe mean, is hey, like just wants everyone to be It's almost her size. Yeah, right? <laughs> How is she even every holding that? Patient to get a proper yeah, I think she has wings. After unlocking her passive talent requires There are some Melusines who have wings. Unleashing so, her so. elemental skill will also trigger the semi-strict bed rest effect. Oh. This effect will grant her a hydro damage bonus and several stacks of convalescence. When non-active characters deal damage with their off-field elemental skills, Sijuin can consume a stack of convalescence to increase that elemental skill damage. Ooh. I like how it's only semi-strict. Like, you know, <laughs> not super strict, because she couldn't be super strict. <laughs> Just a little. Wow, so it seems like the Bond of Life mechanic is pretty integral to both Sijuin and Claran's kits. Mm -hmm. That sure was a lot of information, though. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see these abilities in action. And travelers won't just be limited to the play styles that they've seen here, right? <laughs> as, I, as I understand it, the mechanics leave a lot of room for open experimentation. Yeah, yeah. Right. And outside of combat, melazines are very connected to the ocean, so Sijuin always takes care of her companions during underwater exploration. Sijuin is especially helpful when her friends are endangered by underwater enemies. She can use her emergency dose talent to continuously restore HP to her party member for a period of time. Ooh. Unfortunately, doing so will lower all of their elemental and physical resistances. 
There's always a price. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. That seems like a skill that would come in handy, though. Sijuin is always looking out for us. Mm -hmm. Thanks, head nurse. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, and I've got a quick question for you all. Yes. Have you noticed any differences between Sijuin and other Melazines? Ah, hmm. well, I think her appearance and her interests definitely stand out. Mm -hmm. Like, if you ignore the tail and the feelers on her head, then she actually doesn't look that different from a human child, right? How could you ignore those? <laughs> right. Well, I'm sure it's fair. <laughs> but also, she's interested in beauty, and she knows a lot about skincare, and she actually even contributes to the most famous beauty magazine in Fontaine. Did not know that. Oh, 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 and her medical knowledge. Right. We haven't encountered any other Melusines who give medical treatment to humans. Oh. And Sijuin seems to care the most about the people of Fontaine. And she's also one of the few Melusines who work in the Fortress of Meripede, right? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, generally speaking, not many people are willing to treat criminals. I mean, not even a Melusine's open-mindedness usually goes that far, right? Mmm, Sijuin's does. You're all bringing up great points. Don't you think that Sijuin's differences from the other Melusines make her seem more unique and approachable at the same time? Mm -hmm. In the Nerei chapter, travelers will have oh, the chance so we to have learn her more story about quest the background well. of this very special what? Melusine in her personal story quest. Woohoo! Oh, that's awesome. Hey, speaking of story quests, didn't travelers meet a mysterious youngster last version? No. Oh. Sometime during Sino's story quest? Mm -hmm. This well, patch is quite Well, travelers packed. will now have the opportunity to Isn't add it? him to their parties. He recently left the desert, and he's eager to travel around. So, Zach, why don't you introduce him? Go, Zach. Oh, me? Uh, okay, then. Let's take a look <laughs> at Sethos' demo. If you're always asking why, you end up thinking yourself into a corner. Sometimes it's better to let go. Give me some space. I, I like Seto's. Uh, his design is quite nice. Oh, okay. wow. His design is so cool. He looks amazing. Yeah. yeah, the clothes and the hair, I love it. Right? Sethos didn't just get power and wisdom from his desert heritage. He's also talented in archery. Sethos has always loved hiking, and he has a great sense of direction. Whether he's exploring the desert or the rainforest, he knows the roads like the back of his hand. And he always knows where to find the best regional specialties. Ooh. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, like anyway. We know where this is going, but I'll say it anyway. When Sethos is in your team, he'll reveal the location of Sumero regional specialties on the mini map. Nice. Cool. Wait, so I'm curious. He's lived in a remote desert for his entire life, and he carries the weight of such an ancient legacy. To me, it seems like someone with that kind of upbringing would either be like really introverted or just super arrogant, but Sethos doesn't seem like that at all. No. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Sethos is a very open minded and cheerful person. As the successor to the mysterious Temple of Silence, he had more educational opportunities than other people who live in Sumeru's desert. His responsibilities drive him to learn about other people and places. He has a very open mind, and he tries to be optimistic. In fact, his personality is a huge help in getting along with other people. So wait, that sounds like... Uh, are you saying he's a social butterfly? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> he's a pretty busy guy, and he lives a pretty varied lifestyle. <laughs> and the he's around the same so age cute. as the general Mahamatra Sino. He occasionally visits the academia, he's always trying to make friends in Sumeru City, and he enjoys browsing goods at the Grand Bazaar. But we've already talked a lot about his hobbies. Let's move on to what he can do in combat. Yes. Sethos's aim shot has a special variant when charged to level 2. He can't move when his attack is charged to its second level, but it allows him to fire a powerful shadow-piercing shot that can pierce enemies, dealing electro damage to targets in its path. Ooh. Sethos's talent, Black Kite's Enigma, can decrease the charging time of his aim shot by consuming elemental energy. Some elemental energy will also be consumed after releasing the shot. Huh. Nice. Ooh, useful. Yeah, and also I noticed his aim shots take a really long time to charge. So I think that means players need to store up elemental energy to fire the shadow piercing shot faster, right? 
Hey, wait a minute. I feel like this is the first Genshin Impact character who actually consumes elemental energy while firing mm. aimed shots. What? Yeah, you're right on. Hey. That's why Sethos has an elemental skill that helps him restore elemental energy. Useful. It's an ancient ritual that deals AoE electro damage, and it also restores elemental energy whenever a hit on an enemy triggers an overloaded, electrocharged, superconduct, electro swirl, quicken, aggravate, or hyperbloom reaction. Ooh. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> but travelers also have another option for firing powerful shots. By unleashing his elemental burst, Sethos will perform an ancient ritual that was passed down from King Deshret's era. He will enter the Twilight Meditation State, converting his normal attacks to enemy piercing dust bolts that deal increased damage based on his elemental mastery. <laughs> oh, that's, that's cool. That sounds like a mini version of the shadow piercing shot, only it doesn't take as much time to fire. <laughs> Useful. Okay, also, it seems like the records of King Deshret have a lot of powerful abilities, so, uh, between you and me, does that mean Sethos has mastered other mysterious rituals and techniques? Of course! Yo. I'm sure that the Temple of Silence has a whole archive of secrets. One of his other talents will also increase the damage dealt by a shadow-piercing shot for a period of time based on his elemental mastery. Okay, all right, sounds like the Temple of Silence is a real impressive legacy. No kidding. So many ancient rituals. Sethos is definitely a talented fighter who can make full use of his martial heritage. He's similar to Kularand in that sense. Yeah. Oh, wow, we finished the first mission. Nice, I wonder what the next one's gonna be. Let's get it. Oh, it looks like we'll have to uncover hidden secrets in our next mission. Mm. Mm. Why, why are all you guys looking at me? <laughs> well, I mean, secrets are kind of your area of expertise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All your character does is speak in riddles. Speak plainly, sir. Yeah, no, that's a good point. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I guess I'm the only one who can shed some light on the hidden secrets. Oh, here he goes. So here we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Archon Quest Chapter 4, Act 6, Bedtime Story, will become Bedtime available story. in version 4.7. Travelers will finally reunite with Dainsley, hey. who will share more information about Conria's past. Ooh. That's, that's what you guys were waiting for, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And <clears throat> also, I, you know, got to break out my voice acting skills for this patch, you guys. Oh my gosh, <gasps> words come out of your mouth? Hell yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> This time, Ether and Lumine will get to meet face to face. Ooh. And based on what we heard in the trailer, it seems like the loom of fate is now complete. So travelers can look forward to learning more about Kari Bear in this uh, quest. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Let's just can't reveal everything right now. Okay? Oh, Kari Bear? Secrets for me. These are important secrets that travelers should uncover for themselves. Oh, okay, okay. You can call off the snipers, call off the snipers. <laughs> right? Look, look I, look, I know, I get it, that everyone can barely contain their excitement. So, I will throw you a bone. To help tide you okay. over until the next update, I'll be sharing a special surprise with y'all. Oh, <laughs> what is it? Come on. Oh, I love surprises. It is. You'll know very soon, I promise. Uh, but first, 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 we need to introduce the event wishes. Ooh, okay? okay. So, okay, okay. in the first phase surprise. of version 4.7, Korak and Alhatham will be featured in the event wishes. <laughs> yeah. Sethos will be the new four star unit that appears on this event wish banner. Okay, I think I'm putting and on Turin's banner. In the second chef. phase of like the version, a little bit. 40 wishes can look out forward to event for wishes Rina, from for Rina. Rina. and for Who was the one who wanted rerun? And because there's never enough. A new five-star sword, <gasps> Absolution, and a new five-star bow, Silver Shower Heartstrings, oh, will also the... be featured on their respective weapon banners. They look so good. Yes. Yeah, so cool. So good, right? All right. Okay, okay. I've made y'all wait long enough. Okay, surprise. Let's bring out the surprise. Yes. I hope everyone Finally. enjoys it. Let's, Let's go. go. Oh my god, it's the animated PV.
cry right now. <laughs> I I love Emmy so much. Okay, the fact that she she sang a song for Genshin, insane. Everything they always. Oh my God, this is the instrumental of the song, Chad. Do you hear it? It's so good. I just love Genshin so much. That's all. <laughs> Emmy, she is such a lovely singer. I have heard her songs for the last like ten years. Okay, yeah, I can't even describe what I'm feeling right now. I I cannot I cannot physically describe what I'm feeling right now. This is this is every like all of my worlds colliding. Everything like this, it could not have been more perfect. It's so beautiful. Oof. I hope they release it on YouTube chat. We'll wait for it to come out on YouTube and watch it again. I'm I'm watching that video. Like I, we need to like break it down. <sighs> she also sang a Bleach ending. By the way. Welcome back, travelers. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. I think it's about time we introduce this domain behind us. Yes, yes. Bring on the challenge. I'm so ready. Dun, dun, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> the location of this challenge seems pretty intriguing. Paimon and the traveler discovered a secret room within the Mondstadt Library, and they've received an invitation to participate in a mysterious performance. Oh, I love secret rooms and libraries. I've always wanted one. Alice. So that's right. The all-new event, Imaginarium Theater, will become available in version 4.7 for travelers who are adventure rank 35 or higher. Nice. Wait, so this is a library? Is it a permanent oh, event? Library. I know. It looks a lot different <laughs> from what I imagined. It's huge. Yeah, it kind of looks more like a magic castle. Mm. Right? 
So cool. I would live there. Please. <laughs> so travelers will encounter a concierge in the area who calls himself. Is Wolfie. this endgame content? Oh, he's so cute. Wolfie. <laughs> He'll reveal that this room was created by a mage and that he's waiting for a guest to take the stage. He is also a poet. <laughs> that guest will hopefully put on a magnificent performance by becoming the main character of the mage's story. Bring on that main character energy. Mm -hmm. Ooh. After arriving in this room, travelers just need to interact with this strange book in order to participate in the imaginary. It's not like the Arunara quest. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> but what kind of challenge is it? Well, let me tell you. It's imaginary a combat event. It contains a series of combat challenges with different battle conditions. Now, only characters who wield specific elemental types will be allowed to participate. Okay. So travelers will have to select characters who meet the requirements of the challenge. Mm. Oh, I get it. But what if we don't have enough characters in our roster who meet the requirements? Uh-huh, good thinking, but you won't have to worry about that. Because first off, six characters will be designated as the initial lineup for each challenge. Trial characters will be provided for travelers that are missing any of those characters. Nice. And travelers can also invite special guest characters to participate in the challenges that aren't restricted by the event requirements. Ooh. In addition, travelers can also designate a certain number of characters as supports for their friends. They can also select their friends' supporting characters to join their own team. That's a nice way to get to try new characters. Right? Friend, friends. Friends. Who, who would say no friends to more friends? Friends support each other <laughs> in staged combat. Friends helping each other. And during the current challenge period, those six designated characters who make the initial lineup will gain fantastical blessings. This will grant them buffs that remain potent even outside of the Imaginarium Theater Challenge. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying those buffs aren't just active during the challenge itself? Yes! Wow. You're kidding. Wait, okay, the mage behind the theater must be super powerful. Oh, super powerful. And I know that everyone's probably wondering why it looked like we had to select so many characters just now, but characters will consume vigor while participating in Imaginarium Theater combat challenges. So when a character's vigor is fully depleted, they will no longer be able to fight, ah. and you will have to replace them with a new character. It's time for some R&R. Mm -hmm. ah, <laughs> this live stream is really good. So when you select your characters, you have to pay attention to how well they work together. Time to befriend the way. Also how well they can fill yes. in for each other. Exactly. But we're not on the same server and chat. <laughs> what are we going to do? That not all selected characters yeah, I got to find my EU wheels, you know. Some characters can only be gathered by progressing through the story. They can formally be added to your team at the end of an Imaginarium Theater battle, or when you encounter certain. There's so events. much in this patch. This patch cool. is actually very good. So assembling After your all team of the filler patches the that we got, yes, this is quite nice. which makes it even more fun. But let me explain a little more about the special events. Your F two P heart is Travelers rescued. Can choose to spend <laughs> Fantasia okay. flowers to trigger events during the story. Now, some events will unlock certain characters for battle, and others may trigger certain perils. Uh -oh. Some doom. So, travelers will have to choose very carefully. Ooh, no pressure. Right? <laughs> travelers can collect performance tour rewards by completing challenges and finalizing their performance results. The first time they complete a challenge, travelers will also receive a debut performance gift. Ooh, present. Ooh. Travelers who feel particularly <gasps> confident can try to attain the star challenge condition during each stage. They'll be able to obtain different premium. levels of performance Florent medals funds. that correspond with the difficulty of the challenge. These medals can be displayed on their profile. Go ahead and show off. One billion premiums. That's not all, right? <laughs> Travelers can also obtain toy medals during this event, which they can exchange with Wolfie the Concierge. Aww. In return, Travelers will receive special poses for their characters when taking photos. Yeah. Right. Travelers yeah. will be able to take all sorts of new cool pictures. I am excited to see new poses. Okay. So hyped. Mm, me too. Right. And also, more poses will be added whenever Imaginarium Theater is updated. Yes. And finally, each performance in the Imaginarium Theater has several difficulty levels, and each one has a different number of challenges. Higher difficulty levels will yield even better rewards. Bring it on. As Wolfie the Concierge likes to say, when the brilliant golden glow of the treasure <laughs> beckons, don't you I think hesitate. it'll come out like at the beginning of the patch, oh, right? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 somehow I still didn't make him as cute as he actually is. Of course, it'll take time for travelers to raise the necessary characters and understand how they fit into this new challenge. Mm. And I'm sure travelers are always looking for ways to get more primo gems. Always. You just said the magic primo word. Gems. Gimme, 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 gimme. <laughs> Each month, Imaginarium Theater will alternate updates with the Spiral oh. Abyss. 
In addition, the total rewards that can be gained from the Spiral Abyss Alternate. has been increased from 600 Primo Gems to 800 Primo Gems. So over alternate? Yes. Yeah. More information will be available across Genshin Impact's official social media accounts. One so month reset? Keep a look out. <laughs> aye, aye, Captain. Ooh, the background is changing. Ooh, here we go. Here Let's we see go. what else this version has in store. Yes, please. Mutual security enhancing simulation. Oh, some mini game stuff. Huh. I see some hilly churls and ruin guards, so I'm assuming this is one of those monster fighting events. Ooh. Yes, sort of. Travelers won't be engaging monsters directly. Instead, they'll be able to command monsters to fight in a cooperative After simulation. After all this, Whoa. are we going to get Natlan like, will be hosting a the, like promo? To improve their will they give us so much in a live stream? That. I'm, they'll be accompanied I'm by not representatives sure. From Mondstadt's like it would be nice, Vulius. but will they <laughs> though? Zuma's Yashiro Commission, Sumeru's Core of 30, and Fontaine special patrol. <laughs> Their joint I feel like I'm well fed. Will they will they give us across more? the continent? Sir, yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> You're making this event sound really official. <laughs> that, that was my official voice. Uh, you know, I'm just doing my best. As I was saying, you can play two different kinds of scenarios in the event, assault scenarios and defense scenarios. As special representatives to the simulation, travelers will need to analyze enemy formations and deploy the best units for completing the challenge. In assault scenarios, you only need to select your combat units and deploy them within your staging area. So once the scenario I think begins, we need to get those in automatically the next start next attacking batch. your mm -hmm. opponents. So sit back and I don't know if you can relax when these things are coming at you, but try. Mm -hmm. Clearly not. I wonder why they Ooh, saved okay. all this okay, for this patch. This Even I am wondering. Great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do it. Oh. How come my hilly churl archers got wiped out so quickly? Oh no. Oh, okay, okay, sorry, sorry, I forgot to mention something important. <laughs> you sorry. know. <laughs> I know, I know. Darth, have you decided then? Are you going to quit? We can fix it now. Some types of combat units are more effective against others. Ranged units like hilly churl archers 